What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome back to another video. With a new activity like Onslaught coming to Destiny 2 comes new builds to help your team defeat waves and waves of enemies while building your defenses. Because of this, we started making new updated build videos. Yesterday, we did a video on the Strand Hunter and the crazy amount of crowd control it has at range. If you would like to see that video, you can by clicking at the top right of the screen now or at the end of this video. However, today, we are gonna continue that focus of crowd control, but instead, this time with ARC. But before we continue on with the video, this video is brought to you by Hyper Controllers. They are the first company to ever put Hall Effect thumbsticks inside a PS5 controller, which means no stick drift. You can customize your own controller or shop for a pre-made one. You can customize a controller for PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC with custom shells, extra paddles or buttons with a remappable chip, Hall effect sensors, mouse click bumpers and triggers, and much more. Hypercontrollers offers a one year warranty on all of their controllers. You can check them out by going to hypercontrollers.com and you can use promo code RXRP to save 5% off your order. For this build, we're not gonna focus on the Hunter as an individual because Onslaught is a group effort. So there won't be any Assassin's Cowl or Liar's Handshake in this build. Instead, we are gonna take a little more aggressive approach with this build while still being able to have that crowd control. Let's start by going over the subclass to include the abilities, aspects, fragments, the weapons, the artifact mods, your exotic, the mods on your armor, and the stats you want to have for this jolting build. Timestamps will be listed in the description box below so you guys can jump to any section that you want to see first. So let's go ahead and start with our subclass first. For our super, we'll be using Gather and Storm. This is gonna help us out dramatically with our AOE damage. For our dodge, we'll be using Gambler's Dodge. Anytime we dodge near an enemy, it will go ahead and recharge our melee ability. For our jump, you can use whatever jump you want. For our melee, we'll be using Disorienting Blow, which whenever we melee a enemy, it will blind them and it'll also amplify yourself. And this will also stun Unstoppable Champions. For our grenades, we will be using Skip Grenades. As for the aspects, we will be using Flow State, which defeating a jolted target makes you amplified. And then for the second one, we will be using Tempest Strike, which while sliding, activate your charge melee ability to unleash a devastating uppercut attack that travels along the ground in front of you, damaging and jolting targets it hits. Now, real quick, if you are using Disorienting Blow with Tempest Strike, remember that whenever you activate Tempest Strike, you will not activate Disorient and blow. So they have their use case scenarios. Use disorient and blow whenever you're close to enemies. And then use Tempest Strike whenever you have a little distance in between you. As for the fragments, I actually had to change them a couple, a uh, little bit. So now we are using Spark of Resistance, which while surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. Then Spark of Shock, which your arc grenades jolt targets. Then we have Spark of Brilliance. This is the one I actually changed. Um, while defeating a blinded target with precision damage creates a blinding explosion. Now this goes hand in hand with Disorienting Blow. You will not always be fighting unstopped champions. So you can still use this on other enemies, dodge, get your dodge back, and then go ahead, kill them and activate Spark of Brilliance and blind everything that's around, which is pretty awesome. And then we also have Spark of Ions, which defeating a Jolted target creates an Ionic Trace. And for Ionic Traces, it is a bolt of pure arc energy that travels along the ground, seeking towards its creator. When picked up, Ionic Trace grants ability energy. And this does all your abilities, not just one of them. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the weapons. Now, you can use whatever weapons you want, but AOE, AKA area of effect is what we want to focus on. And all three of our weapons will be able to help with that, starting with the Wither Horde. The Entrenched Perk on Wither Horde is um, Primeval's Torment, which projectiles fired by this weapon's blight, the target or nearby area on impact. This is gonna help prevent a lot of enemies from, especially a lot of low level enemies from actually like bum rushing you guys. And with the Horde is just all around good weapon for PVE as well as PVP, 
Do not ask me why I have over 3,300 kills in PvP with my Wither Horde. I love this thing, and not gonna lie, probably about 85% of these kills on Guardians was with me sticking them with the Wither Horde shot. But anyways, I digress. Um, Wither Horde is great for PvE and PvP. Use it. I, I'm telling you, it, it's an amazing weapon, especially as a GL that automatically reloads itself. So definitely go ahead and use this. So we want to focus heavily on arc. And because of that, we want to jolt as much as possible. And we are going to go ahead and use this Ikelos SMG. And you can use any arc weapon that you want that has Volt Shot. It could be this, it could be a Glaive. Yeah, I said it, it could be a Glaive. <laughs> it could be a auto rifle. It could be whatever weapon that you want that has Volt Shot. Mine specifically has uh, Small Bore, Seraph Rounds, Feeding Frenzy, Volt Shot, and then obviously the Origin Traits, uh, Rasputin's Arsenal. And then for the mod, I actually put Minor Spec on mine. You want Volt Shot, Volt Shot's gonna help you tremendously with keeping area of effect. AOE, I, and I can't stress this enough, AOE, AOE, AOE. Same concept with Hullabaloo. This one has Volt Shot and Chain Reaction. Chain Reaction's get, got a buff um, for heavy grenade launchers. Unfortunately, it's getting a nerf come uh, the final shape for non-heavy grenade launchers. If by any chance you wanted to use something else like a rocket launcher, that's totally fine, but you want to have something that has as much AOE as possible. Next, let's go ahead and head over to the artifact. Now, unfortunately, this season's artifact doesn't help out the arc subclass at all. So you can pretty much use whatever perks you want. There's really nothing specific you have to look for. However, if you were going to go into a solo content um, for Onslaught, then I would use solo operative. And if you were gonna go use a rocket launcher, I would definitely go ahead and put on overload rocket launchers. For the exotic, we will be using Shinobu's Vow. And trying to perk on this is new tricks, which improves skip grenade and you gain an additional skip grenade charge. Skip grenade returns energy when it damages enemies. Next, let's go ahead and go over the mods that we are using. So in the helmet, I am using one harmonic siphon. Why not? I am using arc for the majority of my weapons. Then we are also using one access to assets and then one heavy ammo finder. Once again, once we find out if enemies actually drop heavy ammo, then most likely access to assets would probably switch to Uh, heavy ammo scout in order to help out the team. But if it does not work like that, then we will keep ashes to assets. As for our gauntlets, we are running double uh, grenade kickstart. For the chest, we are running harmonic resistance as well as concussive dampener and then a single charged up. For the legs, one recuperation and obviously to help you stay alive, one innervation and then one ele elemental charge. And then for the class item, double bomber and then a single reaper. For the stats, you want to prioritize resilience first. Onslaught is a PVE activity. So if it's PVE, you should be using resilience over recovery all the time, unless you are a warlock. I mean, I don't know. I can see the argument for that too. Uh, next then we have discipline. You also want to max this out as much as possible. Now, because we will be dodging next to enemies and disorienting them, AKA blinding them, we really do not need high mobility. So for the third stat, try to get as much high intellect as possible so you can get your super more often. 
when I was uh, using this build inside of the solo master lost sector, I found out that it is best to get your super more often than it is to get your dodge, which you will still get it fast. Like it still does come by fast. So definitely in priority, resilience, discipline, and then intellect for this specific build. Now, as you guys can see from this solo master lost sector, we are going to be in the face of our enemies. We don't have time to sit back and watch everything unfold because we are what makes everything unfold. Not gonna lie, this build may not be for everyone because it is a very fast paced build, but it is very effective in keeping things jolted, blinded, and consistent damage from the blights that you make from Wither Horde. If anything, it is tons of fun to play with because you are doing more than just running around, meleeing an enemy, going in viz, meleeing the next enemy, and then going in viz again. You know, shout out to Assassin's Cowl and Liar's Handshake. Go ahead. Give it a try though, and let me know what you guys think of this build in the comment section below, and if there's anything that you guys would actually change, let me know that as well. Also, let me know which Hunter subclass you guys wanna see a build for next. We still have to do Stasis, Void, and Solar. And last but not least, 100 more Vault Spaces coming soon, yeah! And that, my friends, brings us to the end. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.